Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Wow. Whew. This Brianna Taylor situation. Yikes. I thought it was bad, but reading this transcript of the evidence that the police have against her and her drug syndicate that they've been investigating since 2016. See, MSNBC and CNN and all these crazy say her name and all this stuff. They not going to tell you. She been on uh, in the investigation from 2016. And I've been there before. It's nothing to be proud of or anything. I just it's just experience. It would be just like if I was talking about sports and well, I used to be a rapper. Now I'm on got a podcast talking about rap music and shit. I have been in this aspect. What they what what she's what she was into and whatnot. Woo! With a different a different um different drug, but still. Woo! Yikes, my nigga. So let's get it started. Without further ado, let's get it started. And oh yeah, before we get started, she didn't deserve to die. For all y'all. She didn't deserve to die. So starting on December 3rd, 2016, the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department Homicide Unit learned that the vehicle in their most recent victim, Hernandez Bowman, was found in a rental that had been rented by Brianna Taylor with an address of 3003 Springfield Drive, Apartment 4, Louisville, Kentucky. The man killed tonight was the city's 111th homicide victim of 2016, and he was young. Police say he was in his late teens, early 20s. When I was on scene just a short time ago, I talked to several neighbors that heard the shots about 10 that ended that young man's life. Boom, 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 boom. I'm thinking, Dad, I say somebody's playing with their gun in the backyard. So I said, well, just come around the block and stay out of the way when I got around this block. That's when I heard the ambulance come. I said, somebody done got shot. Second Division officers responding to what neighbors tell me is a usually quiet street around 7.15 tonight. The driver of that silver car, riddled with bullet holes, was shot, found slumped over the wheel. He was pronounced dead at the scene after crashing into the side of a home. That vehicle came to rest against a residence. Uh, the residence was occupied. Fortunately, no one in the home was injured. Uh, the victim, unfortunately, was pronounced deceased here at the scene. And back here live tonight, Rick, police are telling me it appears the victim, the driver, was the only person in that car at the time of the shooting. So far, no suspects and no arrests. That is the very latest for you tonight from LMPD headquarters. I'm Lauren Adams, WLKY News. That young man who was found dead in that car died in a car that was rented by Breonna Taylor. Say his name, Fernandez Bowman. His life mattered too. We're not saying Brianna killed him or anything like that. But this is where the investigation begins. At approximately... 530, Detective Y. Baker and Jay Speaks went to Miss Brianna Taylor's address to conduct an interview regarding any knowledge she may have that would be relevant to the homicide investigation. Upon contact with Miss Taylor, detectives observed a male in the apartment with her identified as Jamarcus Glover aka Chapo 
Miss Brianna Taylor stated that she did not know the victim and that she found out what had possibly happened from her boyfriend, Jamarcus Glover, a.k.a. Chapo. Miss Brianna Taylor stated that she had been dating Jamarcus Glover for approximately three to four months and allowed him to drive her rental car. Brianna Taylor provided detectives with the contact phone number, which is the same number that Jamarcus Glover, a.k.a. Chapo, provided on February 14, 2020, when he called the Louisville Metro Police Department's 1st Division to file a complaint for his vehicle being towed as well as the same phone number that is consistent with the history of jail calls between Jamarcus Glover and Miss Taylor. So, very interesting. They find a body, a dead body in a car. They go back to the person who the car's rented to. In the house is a big time drug dealer. The phone number Brianna gives as a contact is this big time drug dealer's phone number. And the investigation begins there. So, fast forward three years to December 30th of 2019. The first division of the Louisville Police Department executed simultaneous search warrants at 2424 Elliott Avenue. 2426 Elliott Avenue and 2605 West Muhammad Ali Boulevard. They arrested Adrian Walker, Ray Sean Lee, Daryl Forrest, Jamarcus Glover, Dominique Crenshaw, Cleve Knight Jr. They found five handguns one was stolen, three long guns, 4.9 grams of crack cocaine, 14.4 grams of marijuana, two cell phones, and assorted drug paraphernalia and surveillance systems. So not a big bust, small time bust with the guns. It was a big, that's a big bust with the guns, but the drugs, that's, that's little small time stuff. So that's obviously was not the trap house. The next day, the place-based investigation, also known as PBI team, selected their first micro-cell location, with the parameters being South 24th Street to South 28th Street, and West Broadway to Magazine Street, based on an increase in violent crime reported in the area like aggravated assaults and narcotics related offenses. The PBI detectives started to gather research within the designated areas such as calls for service, 911 calls, incident reports, and narcotics related crime tips, the tip line, 1 800 tip. A lot of call volume and narcotics related crime tips led detectives to 2424 Elliott Avenue. So they did not pick this address out of a hat. This was not like if some black people live there, let's go fuck with them. The people in the neighborhood were constantly calling the police about the activities happening at 2424 Elliott Avenue. That's one thing that people don't understand about the black community. It's a lot of people that just live there and work. Everybody's not a thug or a gangster or a hood rat or a homeboy or a D-boy. It's tons of people in the black community that just work and they don't want a fucking trap house on their block or next door to them or across the street from them. 
and all the activities, the drive-bys, the tra foot traffic, and everything that goes on with it. So 2424 Elliott Avenue was identified by the people of the community and relayed to the cops over a period of time, and finally the cops decided to do something about it. Additionally, through physical surveillance, detectives observed that vehicular and foot traffic had picked back up at 2424 Elliott Avenue. And salute to the Tatum Report for um, providing this information. Salute to Brandon Tatum, man. This is this is bombshell information. So on January the second of 2020, which is a few days later, the PBI team had. Louisville Metropolitan Police Department's technical unit installed a pole camera at the intersection of South 24th Street and Elliott Avenue facing west. Within an hour of the pole camera being installed, PBI detectives witnessed approximately 15 to 20 vehicles go to and from 2424 Elliott Avenue for a short period of time which is indicative of narcotics trafficking how many of y'all get get 20 visitors 20 cars pull up to your house in, a, in an hour because I know some y'all y'all Brianna got a lot of fans and a lot of supporters and this is not an attack on Brianna this is just the facts but Brianna got a lot of diehard supporters. How many of y'all have 20 cars pull up to your house for a short period of time in one hour? And this was the first hour that they set up the pole camera to surveil 2424 Elliott Avenue. So around 5.52 PBI detectives observed a white 2016 Chevrolet Impala with Kentucky tags pull up in front of 2424 Elliott Avenue and Jamarcus Glover, a.k.a. Chapo, exited the passenger side of the vehicle. The vehicle was registered to Breonna Taylor. of 3003 Springfield Drive, apartment four, Louisville, Kentucky. So this is the second time. So now, so they got, the, the, the guy got killed in 2016, Brown had run the dead car. They're investigating a trap house in 2020. The, the guy who's at the center of the investigation pulls up. The first day they put the pole light, the pole camera up, he hops out of a car, that's registered under the name of Breonna Taylor. This, uh, this all may be coincidences. <laughs> this all may be coincidences. This may just be the white man <laughs> trying to make niggas look bad. They went through the phone book and just picked the name and said, we're going to fuck with these niggas today. I don't know. So they got all this... They're surveying, and one thing about when you're being surveyed, you rarely know it. You just got to know it. You dig what I'm saying? You got to know. You got three to six months to, to run a trap house before you got to move to a different location. Okay, so apparently Glover gets arrested sometime within the, in the, in the next day. And he calls Brianna Taylor from the cell block or the jail or wherever he's at and he says to Brianna call Doug aka Adrian Walker on Facebook and see where the fuck Doug at he got my fucking money riding around in my motherfucking car and he ain't even where he's supposed to be at Brianna Taylor says 
You said Doug? Yeah, Big Doug. I'll call him. Why can't I find him on Facebook? What's his name on there? Michi Walker. And that's the end of that conversation. So then a little while later, Glover calls again to Brianna. He says, you talked to Doug? Yeah, I did. He said he was already back at the trap. Then I talked to him again just a minute ago to see if you had contacted him. They couldn't post bond till one. Just be on standby so you can come get me. Love you. Love you, too. Then about four hours, two hours later, two and a half hours later, Glover calls Brianna again from the jail. I come give me some rest in your bed. Jamarcus? What, you don't want me in your bed? I didn't say that. I haven't really been sleeping right either. I keep waking up every other hour type shit. Checking on me? I want you to know I appreciate it. When you're around, I stress more. Because I just always be worried about you. Not like with you and bitches, but just period. With the police. Like all kind of shit. I love you. I love you too. So they put a note here and said, it's, it is important to note that from January 1st, 2016 to January 3rd, 2020, Brianna Taylor's phone number was called 48 times from jail. Unfortunately, several of the calls are no longer available to listen to. And when the number is called from booking, it does not provide an inmate's name. However, once the inmate is booked and assigned to a dormitory, the system is able to track the inmate that is making the call. In the time frame referenced above, Jamarcus Glover called Brianna Taylor 26 times from his dormitory and a male by the name of Curtis Palm called Brianna Taylor seven times from his dormitory. Curtis Palm has a conviction of possession of controlled substances of cocaine from 2016 as well as a history of other felony convictions. Fast forward to January 9th, 2020. At this point in the investigation, PBI detectives had conducted physical surveillance and surveillance through the poll camera numerous times on the 2400 block of Elliott Avenue. Through the PBI detectives training and experience, 2424 Elliott Avenue appeared to be a trap house. And the suppliers of the narcotics for the trap house were Jamarcus Glover and Adrian Walker. Jamarcus is Brianna's boyfriend at the time. PBI detectives observed through their surveillance that when the narcotics being dealt from 2424 Elliott Avenue were low, meaning there was minimal pedestrian and vehicle traffic, Jamarcus Glover or Adrian Walker would show up operating a red 2017 Dodge Charger with Kentucky tags and appear to re-up the trap house at 2424 Elliott Avenue. Both individuals have been observed either entering exiting 2424 Elliott Avenue or dropping suspected narcotics near the sidewalk between the vacant house 
at 2425 Elliott Avenue and 2427 Elliott Avenue. Once they left the area, pedestrian and vehicle traffic resumed to normal. So they figured out when the drops were made and who was doing the drops. Because you don't keep like all the drugs in the house. You only keep a certain amount of drugs in the house in case it gets raided. You go pick up the money and you drop off the drugs. It's very it's very business like. These um trap houses. When they're done right, like these guys are doing it. These are professionals. And just because they got caught doesn't really mean they're not professionals. You everybody gets caught and everybody goes to jail. At the end of the day. During the early afternoon hours of that same day, PBI detectives observed the red 2017 Dodge Charger leaving Elliott Avenue. PBI detectives attempted to follow the vehicle to further the investigation into Jamarcus Glover and Adrian Walker's criminal enterprise. PBI detectives had a difficult time following the vehicle as the operator was conducting heat checks by driving around the same city block twice using evasive maneuvers by making abrupt turns and unsafe lane changes. Since the PBI detectives had exhausted all conventional means of surveillance on this vehicle, a search warrant for a GPS tracking device to be installed on the vehicle was applied for and signed. So basically when 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 the red <laughs> when the red car left the scene either Jamarcus or Adrian one of them was driving it the feds tried to follow these niggas is professional so they anytime they leave the scene of the trap house they 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 act like they're under surveillance okay they act like they doing what they doing which is smart because they professionals they G's they not they 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 not gonna just drive off they gonna circle the block so if you follow them they gonna know you follow them if they see a red car if they circle the same block three times and it's that same damn car that just happened to be behind them every three all three times they circled the damn block they know that you following them And they making lane changes and cutting across tracks. So if you follow them, it's going to be obvious to them. They doing stuff to where it's going to be obvious through the rear view window that that damn same car ain't got no business being behind us after we done did all this shit. How is that same car just happen to still be behind us? So these guys are professionals. So the police got tired of all that. And they just asked for a GPS device to be put under in, uh, under the car. So they, you know, so, so one time, sometime during the night, cops are gonna come and install a GPS device in the car, so that they can know where, so they can track that car instead of having to follow them around, because these guys are already hip to that. So the next day, Louisville Metro po Police Department. Tech unit installed the GPS tracking device on the red 2017 Dodge Charger. From January 12th to January 31st, the data from the GPS tracking device shows that the vehicle went to Brianna Taylor's house six times. Fast forward to January 16, 2020. PBI detectives observed Jamarcus Glover operating the red 2017 Dodge Charger pull up and park in front of Brianna Taylor's house. PBI detectives then observed Jamarcus Glover walk directly into Brianna Taylor's apartment. After a short period of time, 
Jamarcus Glover was observed exiting the apartment with a suspected U.S. Postal Service package in his right hand. Detective Kelly Goodlett was able to take photographs. Jamarcus Glover then got back into the red 2017 Dodge Charger and drove straight to 2605 West Muhammad Ali Boulevard. Through physical surveillance, PBI detectives had observed numerous short stays, both pedestrian and vehicle, at 2605 West Muhammad Ali Boulevard, as well as Jamarcus Glover and his associates come and go from the location. So you know what that means by now. If, you, if you're not slow, that's also a trap house. It's another trap house. PBI detectives believe that 2605 Muhammad Ali Boulevard was a secondary trap house in their narcotics trafficking operation. So they, I mean, look, this is like, and I've been there before, and the, the surveillance they'll do on you, you basically got a cop when you go to court. And this ain't even the feds. <laughs> this ain't even the feds. This is just Louisville, Metropolitan Police Department. The, the city. <laughs> got all types of, I mean, <sighs> they got these guys, okay? They got these guys. And just to think that this started when a guy got killed in a car in 2016. And the car was <laughs> rented by Breonna Taylor. Fast forward to February 4th, 2020. PBI detectives applied for a second GPS tracking device on the 2017 Dodge Charger because the first warrant was expiring. At this point in the investigation, PBI detectives learned via the GPS tracker that the red 2017 Dodge Charger had made a trip to Biloxi, Mississippi where Jamarcus Glover once resided and has ties to narcotics trafficking within Mississippi. A few days later on February 6, 2020, PBI detectives submitted a grand jury subpoena for Jamarcus Glover, Adrian Walker, and Kiara Bradley, who is Jamarcus's baby mama. Chase bank records. So now they're now they're getting after these guys' bank records, okay? So they done subpoenaed for these for these guys' bank records. They're not on, they're not just surveilling them, following them around. They not only have a camera pointed right at the trap house. They not only are taking pictures when they enter the other trap house. But now they've they're looking at these guys' bank records. Fast forward. A week later to February 13th, 2020, at approximately 1427 hours, PBI detectives observed through the pole camera Jamarcus Glover operating a black Dodge Charger with Kentucky tags pull up in front of 2424 Elliott Avenue and go inside the residence. The vehicle is also registered to Breonna Taylor. So now they swapped out the red one for the red charger for a black charger. Which is smart because the red charger got a GPS tracking system on it. <laughs> now, the police done put a tracking system on that one. So salute to them for being smart enough to switch up the cars. 
Sometimes it's just a piece of me that root for the bad guy. <laughs> but, you know, that's just, you know, whatever. But this car, this black charger is also registered to Breonna Taylor. At approximately 2.30, PBI detectives observed Breonna Taylor get out of the passenger side of the vehicle and look around for a few seconds before she got back into the vehicle. At approximately two minutes later, PBI detectives observed Jamarcus Glover exit 24 24 Elliott Avenue and get back into the vehicle and then the vehicle pulled out pulled off eastbound on Elliott Avenue Brianna came by came by she, she scoped the scene looked around made sure the coast was clear and then Jamarcus came out hopped in the car and they pulled out and they got all this under surveillance Kids, stay away from this stupid this stuff. It is important to note that PBI detectives have observed on the poll camera Brianna Taylor's black Dodge Charger pull up in front of 2424 Elliott Avenue numerous times at various hours of day and night. So that's the black charge. So they love charges. <laughs> These niggas like charges. <laughs> That was their preferred vehicle, the Dodge Charger. These motherfuckers, why Dodge Charger ain't donate no money to try to get me off? Dodge Charger need to try to, you know, do a commercial for Brianna. Say her name and shit. That was her, that was, that was, she, she bought more Dodge Chargers than a motherfucker. So the next day, Officer Corey Evans of the Louisville Metro Police Department, 1st Division, told the Red Dodge Charger from 2605 West Muhammad Ali Boulevard for a parking violation. Jamarcus Glover went to the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department's 1st Division desk clerk and attempted to file a complaint against Officer Evans. Jamarcus Glover gave the phone number to contact him, which is registered to Brianna Taylor. PBI detectives were able to verify through CLEAR, which is a law enforcement database, that as of February 20th, 2020, Jamarcus Glover used Brianna Taylor's address as his residence. So you remember in 2016 they were dating and this guy's still using her address in 2020, February of 2020. And they're always together. And this is Jamarcus Russell, a.k.a. Chapo, big time drug dealer. And no, Brianna didn't deserve to die. Nobody deserves to die, right? Nobody, right? I mean, if we're going to do it like that, nobody deserves to die ever for anything. <laughs> well, fast forward to the next day. PBI detectives received Jamarcus Glover's bank records from Chase Bank. On these bank statements, Jamarcus Glover used Brianna Taylor's apartment as his mailing address. So I mean, at this point, unless you're a fucking asshole, it's safe to say that Brianna Taylor lives with this guy. They're always together. He uses her address for every goddamn thing. Fast forward to March 13th, 2020. 
PBI detectives, with the assistance of other criminal interdiction division detectives and the SWAT team, executed simultaneous search warrants at 2424 Elliott Avenue, 2425 Elliott Avenue, 2426 Elliott Avenue, and Brianna Taylor's apartment. So now we start to understand. I heard a lot about how they went to the house. They already had the drug. Well, these were simultaneous warrants because they don't want you to get rid of the drugs. This is a common tactic they do. They'll, they'll hit everything at the same house so that you can't call the other trap house and say, hey, man, we just got busted. Get rid of everything. And of course, they're going to hit Breonna Taylor's house because the guy at the center of the investigation, Jamarcus Glover, a.k.a. Chapo, from 2016 up until now, has identified that as his place of residence. So of course they're going to hit where the drug, where the guy lives at. Or where he says he lives at. That's where he puts on everything. Every time you ask him anything where he lives, every time he signs up for anything, he puts that address. So, of course, they're going to hit that address. But there's a lot of things that are about to be revealed. A lot of screwballs, a lot of curveballs. During a search of 2424 Elliott Avenue, which is the main trap house, PBI detectives were able to recover a large amount of suspected crack cocaine and suspected fentanyl pills inside a Crown Royal bag in a tree in the backyard of the property that was hidden in order to avoid a detection from law enforcement. K-9 Maverick alerted on the bag containing the narcotics. PBI detectives also located a large amount of U.S. currency, digital scales, and other evidence of narcotics trafficking within the residence. Pictures were taken of an attempt to destroy suspected cocaine by placing it inside the toilet tank in the residence. Three firearms were recovered from the glove box of a beige 2001 Crown Victoria and one firearm was recovered from a gap to the right of the front porch steps at the vacant house at 2426 Elliott Avenue. Jamarcus Glover, Darius Bowman, Rayshawn Lee, and Alicia Jones were located at 2424 Elliott Avenue at the time the search warrants were executed. PBI detectives were able to seize all these individuals' cell phones and execute search warrants on them. PBI detectives also obtained an LG and E bill from inside the 2424 Elliott Avenue that had Adrian Walker's name on it. When the search warrant was executed, at Brianna Taylor's house, an officer involved shooting occurred, and as a result, Brianna Taylor was killed. Present inside the apartment at the time of the search warrant was executed was Brianna Taylor and Kenneth Walker. The Public Integrity Unit responded to the scene and took over the investigation. It is important to note that PBI detectives had a signed search warrant for 2605 West Muhammad Ali Boulevard, but due to the officer-involved shooting at Brianna's house, the warrant was unable to be served. So once Brianna got killed, they shut everything down. They didn't search, they didn't exercise the warrants on the other houses, the other trap house. So yeah, guys, part two, coming tomorrow so make sure you tune in R.I.P. to Brianna man R.I.P. to Brianna the thug missus man she was 
tomorrow we going uh, you going to learn so much more about her involvement in this drug cartel, this syndicate. She was a boss, man. I can see why the street Louisville is a hood city. It's a thugged out city. You know they bout it bout it. You can see why there's so much love for her. She was a boss and a lot of that is going to be revealed tomorrow when I drop part 2 of this. Brianna was a boss. She was like the black Griselda Blanco of Louisville. Facts, my nigga. So, stay tuned. Part 2 coming tomorrow.